What's up, everybody? I am here at the North American International Auto Show in Detroit, Michigan, held at the Cobo Center. Uh, we're about to go check out some cars. Anybody who don't know me, I am crazy about cars. I grew up in Flint, Michigan, and cars was our life. So I'm here to check out a few trucks. I don't really need to see everything. I'm here to see what's new from Hyundai. Uh, the Hyundai Palisade, the Kia Telluride, those are both their new three-row SUVs. I'm here to see um, the new Cadillac XT6, which is their new three-row crossover. And the Chinese cars are here. GAC, G-A-C is here. So let's take a look around and see what's new. Starting right off the bat with the new Chevrolet Blazer. The return of the Blazer is pretty much a name that's always been in the Chevrolet line, but this one is coming back with a sleeker, more sporty style. Pretty much themed as the Camaro on the interior. It's just a tick bigger than the Equinox, smaller than the Traverse. We'll come in around 35,000. Coming in three trims. There's a sport trim and a luxe trim, which this one is here, because you can tell by the chrome accents. Mm -hmm. Is that what it's going for? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's going to be uh, the tick over the Equinox. Right, because that's what I own. I own it. Yeah. Equinox. But there, this one has just a little bit more space. It's not that much right, bigger. Right. But they'll top out at 48 wow. with all fully loaded. Wow. Yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. And did you uh, peep out the Camaro interior? So all the gauges, the instrument cluster, On the this one? yeah, the infotainment that's all from the Camaro. Even oh. the um the vents, the air vents are all from the Camaro. Oh. Yeah, the, the headlights too. That's all Camaro. I made a friend. Yep, that's all Camaro. Enjoy the show. No matter where I go. People will talk to me, okay? We don't really need to see a lot of the Chevy stuff because we see it every day in our everyday lives. That's a nice traverse. But we're gonna kinda kick through all of these domestic cars pretty fast and get to the meat. Oh, that's cool. They're doing some virtual reality over here. Everybody's in line for that. I'm not waiting for that. That's what's going on in that line. Corvette Grand Sport. If you want to pay $106,000 for a Corvette, there it is. Oh, look at this color. Now we're talking. Oh, that's beautiful. That's like a limoncello yellow Camaro. Oh, yeah. They did a great job. And I love the new taillights. I don't know if you noticed that, but the taillights are a little bit different. They made the, the end a little bit tighter so that the wheel hunches would stick out a little bit more. That color... This video won't do that color justice. It's gorgeous. There's really nothing that we need to see at four. Uh, okay, we'll check out the new Ford Ranger. The Ranger is making a return this year to the States, although it's been available around the world for quite some time. It's just now coming back to the States to give the Colorado some competition. 
And there is an electric F-150, but I don't know if it's here, but uh, I saw it online. Nice heavy duty. I think Ram's interior is still better though. That Ram 1500 is still in the show with the interior. The layout, the dash, the instrument panel is all so much better than in the Fords and especially the Chevys and the GMCs. It shits on them, honestly. That's the new Explorer there. New Ford Explorer, brand new. We'll have a rear wheel drive bias, although you can get it in all wheel, but it's going to be modeled after the Aviator with rear wheel forward. So right now I'm looking for, oh, there it is. I'm looking for the Jeep Gladiator. Pardon me. So Jeep has taken the Wrangler and added an extended bed to it. And it's called the Gladiator. And same frame with an extended bed on the back. About the same space in the back as a Colorado on the bed, but you can still take all the doors and windows off too. That's Gladiator and Rubicon trim. Beautiful orange. Wow, that is a very nice truck. Motor Trend truck of the uh, SUV of the year. Oh, there it is. There's the winner. There's the Ram. Motor Trend Truck of the Year. Dodge Ram 1500. They did a great job with it. Heavy duty will tow up to 35,000 pounds with a diesel engine. That's what I was talking about. That's the interior that Chevy, GMC, and Ford will all have to compete with. They're miles behind. They've brought, they've, uh, I'm sorry, they've brought complete luxury to the pickup truck. This is a nice looking truck. Nothing really new happening at Dodge. I mean, has Dodge really been exciting? The 300 is uh, the, pretty much the best thing that comes out of Chrysler right now. I'm going to kind of bypass Dodge and uh, get to where I want to be, which is Hyundai and Kia. Oh, look at this paint. Wow, five series in a liquid mat. That's gorgeous. Actually, we'll cut through this one. McLaren.
Hello there. Ah, oh, there we are. Kia's in the back. Tell your ride. Can you see the riding? That's where we're going. So this is the new Hyundai Santa Fe. Beautiful. That is what you call an evolution. Beautiful. But what I'm here to see is the Palisade. So let's go do it. That's the next old fuel cell. And here is the Palisade. Oh. Oh. Oh, wow. Look at Annis, another row all the way in the back back there. Oh, this is beautiful. Look at the sunroof and the moonroof in the back. This is plush. What a great job. So the last time that Hyundai had a huge three row, it was the Santa Fe XL and it didn't do that well. But with the SUV market being on fire, they knew that it was time to step it up. And this is a great example of what can be done. I've been telling everybody for a long time, but give it about five years, Genesis, Kia, Hyundai, that umbrella will be the biggest and best car company in the world because they're giving you quality, they're giving you um, value, and their cars last a long time, and you don't have to worry about any unnecessary trips to the dealership. You know, JD Power always rates is very high, so I'm gonna get out so you can see the exterior of this car, but this is gorgeous. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at those nice LED tail lights. That's a big truck. Think of the size of a Chevrolet Traverse. That's a full size truck. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, look, there it is. Oh, this is awesome. This is why there's no place like Detroit to come to auto show. Look at this set. These are all real. That's all real. And they have a course that people are driving they're driving the Telluride on an all-terrain course and it's going up and down hills and different gradients and oh, you can see it coming around the bend. I hope it comes around here one more time. Uh, someone else is going to get in there now. That is amazing. I think I kind of want to stay here and wait for it to come back around. You can see one in the distance. Here it comes. Check out the course. Now it's going to go up that hill. Oh, that is brilliant. Brilliant.
I don't want to get in that line to try and drive it, but <laughs> how you doing? Uh, no, just making it for my YouTube channel, but I've been waiting to see this live and in person since two years. I Once I finish this, oh, I've been, I've been watching. As soon as I'm done with this video, I'm going to come back. Yeah, we were launching it on ramps with the Nitro Circuits guys. We had 30,000 people for uh, wow. the Seabody Ignited last night. So is that trim that I've seen online with the different paint and the, and the bush grill, is that going to make it to market? You mean like these? Are you talking about the orange well, one? Well, it didn't have the blacked out fenders though. This is all, this, these are SEMA holdovers. So this is aftermarket stuff. But we'll, if you want, we can give you the link of the company. It's based out of Southern California. Okay. Oh, you know there you go. Here's the story of the car. That, oh, that is beautiful. The concept car, the concept when they brought it out was striking, you know. So the only, I wish the headlights had stayed the same from the concept. I like the, I like the headlights, but I love the yellow day, uh, running daylight. I like that. That's cool. I'll be back, though. All right, man. Okay. See you later. I want to see one up close and personal, but look at this. Look at the size of this course. This is 200 tons of soil and, and 300 tons of stone brought in for people to come. Actually, I'm going to stay here for a second and watch for the next car to come around. So you, here it comes. Oh, that is so awesome. I love it. This is the reason I came here to see this truck. Look at that. Oh. Oh, that's brilliant, brilliant. Okay, that's the new RAV4. Huge evolution, huge. Oh no, I sound like him. It, <laughs> it's very, very posh. I like that they took off all those buggy looking edges and made them nice and straight. And it actually looks like something that an adult would drive right now. I love it. Return of the Supra. So this was done in basically in collusion with BMW. The thing I don't like about it is that it's so small. The old Supra was a lot more substantial. This is pretty much the same as the BMW Z4 with Toyota pieces and has a BMW interior. Starting around fifty thousand dollars. So all the switch gear is BMW. Some of the engineering and then the exterior is all Toyota. It is nice, but it's very small. It used Supras used to have a little back seat. They don't have that anymore. Hello, Nissan and Buick. I never see Nissan. Nissan has been late for many years. Sorry if you're a Nissan driver, but as a car lover, it's never, it hasn't done anything. The very first Infinities were their best ventures and since then it's been very dry. Nothing really to see at Buick. We already know what's out for Buick. Uh, we can check out the Lincoln Aviator, though. Look at this color. That's a beautiful blue. Nautilus. MKC. 
And here is the aviator, what we've been waiting for. So, air suspension, rear wheel drive, three row. It has a suspension system that monitors the roll and adapts before you get there. So if there's a pot roll or a dip, it adjusts on its way to you. Oh, that is gorgeous. That is absolutely stunning. Oh, I love how the roof line dips off in the back. It makes it look like it's in motion even though it's steel. And the chrome. Well done. Very well done. It's not a baby navigator. It's all on its own. Actually looks better than the Navigator because the lines on it are more for luxury instead of utility. Look at those 20s. Oh no, I think those are 22s. Check out that buse. Oh, it's like a flesh tone interior. Oh, gorgeous, stunning. Although this is the last six months of its existence, after the summer, these will no longer be produced. This is the last CT6 that will be out. The engine in them will be called the Blackwing, which is a harken back to the past. Oh, but look at the color on this CT, CTS. Oh, look at this color. CTSV. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, and the ATS Coupe. This is outstanding. Recaro seats. Still has the haptic touch feedback on the instrument cluster and um, infotainment panel, but they're working on that. Excuse me. XT4 which we already have seen on the road. And now we come to the X-T6. This is Cadillac's answer to the, BIM, uh, the Buick Enclave, the Chevy Traverse. They did a nice job. It looks like a mom car though. The front end is a little bit too tapered for the size of the truck. So it dips down into a little, acu a little acute angle. But it has the Scala styling on the front, which is really cool on the truck. And that front end is reminiscent of what the next Escalade will look like with the smaller headlights and the flatter grill. Wow. It is very beautiful, but very soccer mom. If that has to go up against the Ford, uh, the Lincoln Aviator, it will lose. But it is beautiful. And the interior is more like the X-T5 than the X-T4. Still three rows. But styling-wise, it just hit, it missed the mark. It missed. X-T4 and that Ruby. Hi, how are you? Good. So this is it in the silver. You can see a, a better look at the interior here. I think it was a rush effort because it was it, the competition it was getting very stiff. It is very handsome though, very handsome. I imagine pricing starting around 65. Okay, now we have to go to the Atlas. That's also on my list. And partially because I personally want to own an Atlas. Oh, I think this is such a cool truck. This is not it though. These are the Tiguan's, but this is the Atlas. That is a big truck. Full size. Kind of like the size of a Tahoe.
standard VW interior, but the exterior styling is what makes it key. I love this truck. I think it just looks aggressive and tough. It looks very tough, like it can handle anything. The best thing coming out of Volkswagen right now. Uh, we'll take a look at Infiniti, but no need really. I sleep on Infiniti. They just, the interiors are still so antiquated. For instance, that panel there, that is pretty much the same panel from seven years ago. And with the interiors that people are putting out right now, there has to be some kind of uh, evolution in the interior of Infinity. That's why I don't see Nissan. That's cool. I don't know what it is, but it's pretty cool. Oh, look at that interior. That is awesome. Now, that is how you do an interior. They're going to do something like that, then Infinity will have my eye again. That's awesome. This is all concept, though. Across from us is the Stelvio Quadrifolio from Alfa Romeo. Love it. Love it. I love the rims. I like the stance. It gives you a... Uh, this to me is what the Cayenne from Porsche should be today. But it's not. And that sucker is fast, too. Pardon me. Very cool. I think, Brian, you will enjoy this a lot. Oh, now we go to the G70 Genesis. I see it over there. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I'm so excited. There it is. Genesis G70 in the flesh. Genesis answer to BMW. Oh. Oh. Oh, this is the manual. Oh, it's very compact. Front seat has a lot of space, but the back seat is pretty tight. I wouldn't want to sit back there myself, but this is beautiful, beautiful. Soft touch all around, great job. Motor Trend Car of the Year. I love the haunts. This line that travels down the car. Great job. G90, which the new one that comes out later this year, so we can wait till the next one comes out. 
Kia K900. Fully loaded. Only option is our colors. I love it. Very substantial back here. Nice room. And now we're at the tell you right. I don't know if that snorkel is just uh, cosmetic or if it actually works, but it's a cool little addition. I think they need to take that camper off the top. But I love it. That's more like the base model there. They did an awesome job. Interior cues come from the K900 with that uh, that display and the instrument panel there for the infotainment. That all comes from the K900, which is the black car we were just looking at. But that daytime running light just sets that whole front end aside from anything you've seen on the road. If you saw that coming up behind you, you would really be like, wow. And you can see that's a large truck. Again, this is the same size as the Palisade, the same size as like a Traverse, maybe a little bit shorter because the Chevrolet Traverse is very long. They did a great job. Kia Stinger, still a beautiful car. Oh, and I think uh, we can hop in this one. Oh, I love the red interior. Well done. This one is bigger in the back than the uh, G70. This is a Grand Tour designed for a little bit more opulence and space for long drives the styling still though kicks i like it in that cold gray color too Oh, look at that gray. Oh, it looks brushed. That is awesome. Now that's definitely not factory, but that, it looks like fabric. That is so cool. Tell your ride is gonna be a hit. I can tell you that right now. Kia, Genesis, Hyundai, they are not playing. here for the win. I think we can get inside this K900. Oh. 
Oh, look at this steering wheel. Steering wheel is gorgeous with the wood accent. This is all real wood. Oh, backseat package. This is wonderful. Suede headliner. Ah, uh, yeah. This is a this is a beautiful, beautiful example. And I love how this line goes all the way down. Beautiful, kind of like a Burmeister Mercedes speaker, but they did a great job. And again, this comes fully loaded. Only option is your color. I love the headlights on this too. I think the headlights are very striking. That is awesome. They did a great job. G70. Oh, I love it in that red. Wow. Again, this video does not do these colors any justice. The G80, it's due for a remodel. It's coming up soon. Still looks good though. I don't, I don't think I'm going to uh, get in line to drive that Telluride because, I mean, it's not going to do anything for me to drive it around in a circle. But the fact that they have that hose set up here for you to do it is outstanding. Oh, no, that is a beautiful way to do a convertible. So they've taken the LC and cut the top off. Concept now, but will be production by the end of the year. Oh, the lines. The lines on that are just outstanding. Oh, there is a little too, <laughs> too many chairs in the back seat. And that white, that's not a regular white. That is like a frosty Arctic. It has a lot of sparkle in it. I still am waiting for something to happen with the spindle grill. It's very, very, uh, you either love it or hate it. And I still don't love it. But this car is beautiful. They changed the headlights from the original too. Oh, I love that little buckle strap, little detail on the top of the headrest there. That's awesome. Well done. Very well done. It just makes a beautiful line on the back. Is there anything else that I have to see? I've seen everything that I came to see. There's nothing that I'm missing. I saw the Atlas. I saw the Telluride. I saw the Palisade. We saw the G70. We saw the K900. Um, oh, I do know what we have to do. For my best friend, Brian, I have to go over here and look at... <laughs> I'm laughing because he knows that when he sees this, this is just for him. Have to go look at <laughs> Toyota Tacoma. Uh, it's not for me, it's for him. So let me find out where it's at. 
because I pretty much breezed through Toyota because, I mean, it's Toyota. No offense, but. All right, here, this is for you, Brian. <laughs> this one has a huge snorkel on it, and I don't know why. Again, I don't know if that's cosmetic or it's real. Here's one in this flat tomato sauce red. I can't. I'm sorry. I don't want to see these trucks. Oh, look at that. That's cool. What is that? TJ Cruiser. Remember the FJ Cruiser? Now that's funky. There's the Land Cruiser, which I still don't understand why it starts at eighty some thousand dollars. No, that does no. That interior just does not say eighty anything. A solid fifty five thousand. Okay, B, I looked at the two Tacomas that they have here, and uh, I hope you're happy. <laughs> I did not go into great detail because it's unnecessary. This auto show is beautiful. A lot of the things that are here we've already seen. A couple of the things are brand new to us. Um, like uh, the Ford Ranger coming back to the States, which was already in the other markets around the world. Finally got to see the Kia Telluride. Um, the Hyundai Palisade. The Motor Trend Car of the Year, the Genesis G70. Motor Trend Truck of the Year, the Ram 1500. Motor Trend SUV of the year, the Jeep Gladiator. And uh, I've seen everything that I came here to see. So I'm going to turn the camera off now, save some of my battery for the ride home. And uh, come see it. If you're in town, check it out. You got a few days left. It, last day is this Sunday, which is the 24th. No, I'm wrong. This Sunday, I'm not certain, but look it up, <laughs> $14. Parking is kind of tough, so find you a ramp or something like I did, and enjoy yourself, all right? Signing out from the North American International Auto Show, Scott Talk, I've had a beautiful time. Now I'm gonna go and do a little bit more in-depth scrutiny of these cars without holding this camera in my hand. Bye.